How's it going everyone? Today I wanted to do a video on something from my childhood, uh, something that I used to collect. So technically it fits with the theme of my channel, I guess. They're collectibles. And they're, they're a little bit mecha. They're not, but I'm just trying to weasel this in. Uh, these things are called barnacles. If you've never heard of them, then you missed out as a child. These are, these are really, really awesome. Especially from the original six, which these are now. These were something that I used to collect. Uh, these being the first set that I had that like kicked everything off. Then we got all these behind me. There's more here, there's more there. By no means did I collect them all, but I did give it a good try. These were basically my childhood, and I thought I'd spend just a couple minutes talking about them. And yeah. There's no script for this video. The only reason they're out is because in my last video, I needed some stand-ins for like people dueling. So I used a couple of the barnacles. And I thought since they're all out of the dusty crawl space, why not make a video about them? So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about them. So enjoy. Barnacles were made by Lego. They are basically these little bits and pieces that you put together and you build these little robotic people. And you can do whatever you want with them after that. Uh, they don't have much movement. Uh, that is literally all they can do. But with the power of imagination, they can do so much more because, yeah, these guys had an entire storyline as my childhood. It was very heavily based around Dragon Ball Z, weirdly enough. Uh, with basically these two being the Goku and the Vegeta, which is weird enough because when I had these, there was a Barnacle movie that eventually came out, and <laughs> I had created a little storyline for these, and I'm pretty sure before I saw the movie, I got these two as kind of like antag antagonistic rivals, and they sort of had these two teams, like split here, that, that side and that side, and I'm pretty sure I got pretty on the ball with how it actually went with the show. Somehow I think the creators knew my storyline and they went with that. These guys were going like Super Saiyan all the time, they were fighting enemies and other toys and things like that. Now when I look back on sort of the power scales of these guys in my headcanon storylines and things like that, because they were able to turn Super Saiyan, obviously. But what I've noticed thinking back in it now is how quickly power creep set in. Like I complain now about power creep in things like Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff, so you get new cards that are superior to old cards in every way, so the old cards become redundant. Um, <laughs> These guys were going like Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3, and then at a point they were going like Super Saiyan like 7,000 or something, which was ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, I might have made them a little bit too OP, where they're probably blasting holes through the earth and stuff. Uh, so we probably had to scale that down a little bit. But getting back on track, these were the first original six Barnacles. They were the Toa race. I think all their names are something to do with uh, Hawaiian names or places or something like that. I don't know too much about that. But what I do know is I'm pretty sure I can recite all their names. Uh, we have right here Lua, Kopaku, Tahu, Pohatu, Gali, and Onua. You will notice some of these are missing things. You'll notice some of them are damaged. This guy right here is very weather worn by the sun and this one's missing the top of his thing. Now the reason that is, is because in my old bedroom, I used to have a windowsill, and these guys just used to stand on there uh, all the time, in this pose, this exact pose. So, <laughs> they have seen some serious stuff, and a lot of them have been broken. For example, this is my main man, uh, Tahu, he was the leader of the this side team. They weren't really good and evil at all, it was just kind of, each had their own team, and they were kind of antagonists to each other. Um, this guy actually was the only one that I sort of painted, I happened to have some red paint, so I touched him up. Um, but his sword is a little bit bent at here, and you'll notice he's missing his little arm cannon. Uh, that is because a cousin of mine came round and broke it. I was very upset by it. Let's uh, not get into it right now. Kopaku here. Uh, each of them are themed around an element as well for different things. So lure is wind, Kopaku is ice, fire. Now I thought he was earth because he's got a boulder in his. So let's say earth, water, and then we get to Onua. Uh, he's digging through the rubble. So he's Earth as well. So technically there's, there's rock and Earth, I guess it is. I always said this guy was darkness. He had darkness abilities. I mean, he is in a dark cave, but rock, Earth, I'm gonna call it darkness. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I was shocked to learn literally two seconds ago that I had lost his face and I have no idea where I put his real legs, but they've gone somewhere. These guys don't do too much. Uh, you just sort of spin their arms and you know, they just sort of move a little bit like this. Uh, they have masks. Uh, you completely assemble all of this by yourself, by the way. Like, they come in little tiny bits, you get a little booklet on how to build them. Uh, it's part of the fun. 
Obviously, some of them I've customized over time. Uh, like this guy and this guy, they used to have their bodies upside down. It kind of gave them a hunch. Nothing against hunched people, but I kind of like them all being symmetrical here, so I just had to, to put them this way. But yeah, these were the original six. These are my favorite ones for the longest of times. I think they were like eight pound each back in the day, or maybe nine pound. To my knowledge, there wasn't that many like added cosmetics you could get for them, but you could get different stuff. So you could get like different face plates for them, for their masks, because the masks were very important. So this is Tahu's mask, but in gray, not that impressive. However, you can get really cool ones like this weathered one. That's like uh, black and brown with rust on it, which looked pretty damn awesome. So after the first wave of Toa, the second wave came out, which I do believe was the Toa Nuva, which were armored versions of these. Let's take a look at them. So this was the second wave, the Toa Nuva. They are basically identical to the Toa, except they've got new armor plates. Their masks have had a little bit of an upgrade and their weapons are now metallic and they have sort of a second function to them. So if we compare obviously both of the Tahus here, you can see uh, basically the upgrade that they've got. The armor being the biggest standout, of course, but unfortunately I'm missing one of his blades here. He would put these on his feet and he'd use it as a surfboard uh, to sort of, they all get this kind of like new second thing, like Kapaku, Kapaku Toa, Kapaku Nuva, right? The names are hard, leave me alone. Kapaku Nuva here, he'd be able to put his blades here onto his feet for ice skates. Lou would be able to put his on his back and he could fly. This guy could make a boulder out of this little staff thing. I think that's not even how he used it. Yeah, he's just having his claws. Keep in mind, uh, these are old, all right? Uh, this guy would, he's would go on his feet. She, oh, she, sorry, she. Uh, the movie confirmed. Oh, I made them all boys, didn't I? Terrible. Uh, she would put them on her feet and she'd be able to swim. She's also got like little propeller things on the back, which were pretty damn awesome. And this guy would also put his on his feet, but I've done this little customized thing where it's like switch blades. <laughs> but they would go on his feet. These were the Nuva. These were, in my head canon, basically the Super Saiyan 10, probably. Once they hit that level, they transform into these guys, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, the armor always made it really awesome. Sometimes I'd put these armors on the other ones as well. Sometimes I'd have like a different storyline and these are just kind of like, like antagonists, like doppelgangers to the main cast, but stronger. These guys have their own movie. I think they're either in the Mask of Light movie or the one that happened after that one. Uh, but we'll get to the Mask of Light in a little bit, but yeah, these were the Toa Nuva, basically upgraded versions of the Toa. Now, the Toa, I don't believe had any proper rivals, or at least none of the rivals that I collected, but these guys did. And these guys had the rivals which were, oh no, it was either the Rack Shield, the Bow Rack. Oh God, this is a tough one. Um, I actually don't know what it is. We'll go with the Rakshi, because I'm pretty sure it's the Rakshi. I think it's the Rakshi. We'll look at the Rakshi next anyway. So yeah, uh, Rakshi. So these guys are the Rakshi, six of them again. Color parallels to the other cast members. Uh, you know they're evil. One, because they've sort of got this very sinister look to them. But two, because they have a parasite inside of them that serves as their kind of core. Uh, so yeah, that that is the Rakshi. I always liked the Rakshi quite a lot because they're just, their legs are so articulate kind of thing and they've got really cool weapons now i know what most of you are thinking these guys <laughs> are just color swaps of each other sort of the only variation you have with these ones is they've got a different fin kind of thing each one has their own unique fin so we've got blades uh, a buzzsaw like sort of crossed fin this and they have their own weapons uh, at the time, obviously, I didn't notice that. Uh, I just saw them as unique and they had different colors and stuff. Uh, honestly, color variations of stuff really sells me on things, but I don't know. I never really minded that they were very similar. Uh, I'm just starting to notice that they, these do articulate a little bit. They've got a little spinny thing on the back so you can move their thing back and forth. But it's their kicks, I think, where the, uh, the main powerhouse here goes. Uh, but these were the Rakshi. They were evil. I don't remember if the Rakshi came before the Bowrock. I think they actually might have come after, but uh, this was them anyway. I don't know any of these guys' names. I only know the Toa and the Toa Nuva's names, but we'll look at the Bowrack next because uh, they're fun. They're, they're little balls. So these are the Bowrack. You'll notice straight away, they look a bit different uh, because they're in this kind of ball shape. That is because they have this really fun kind of fold up mechanic where you can fold up their arms and legs to turn them into these little balls, which they get stored inside of their pods, sort of like hanging which I think is really awesome, but uh, when you take them out, you can pull their arms out like this. They've got little legs, 
Uh, they're much smaller than the more like humanoid ones, but they're still just as threatening. They look really awesome. I've done a little bit of customization by accident on these. By the way, I'm ashamed of the customizations I've done for some of these. Uh, I've clearly swapped eyes because I think they look cool. I don't think that now. I'd rather them all be uniform in their correct form. These guys have the ability to <laughs> attack like that. Uh, also, these guys are evil again, uh, much like the Rakshi. They kind of have this kind of parasitic mask inside of them. Uh, which each of them has their different things. If you take that out, I always assume they're powerless. What's great about their masks as well, which is something that I used to implement in my stories, the Toa would be around for all of these. They would take on all these different forms as newer ones came. They were always stronger. But if a Barnacle would lose his mask, he'd basically lose a lot of his power. And if one of the Bowrap got their mask onto one of them, then basically you could turn them evil for a temporary amount of a time and they could control them so uh, that was my head cannon anyway for what the little parasitic masks could do um, I don't think the Rakshi like parasites could go on top of them or anything like that but yeah you've got the same thing again uh, each one has their own unique weapon they are again <laughs> just color swaps of each other uh, especially with these these guys are literally identical uh, except for the colors and this whatever sort of weapon thing they have. So we've got fire for the red one, uh, whatever that is for the brown one. And that actually is somebody else's head for something. Uh, a chainsaw for the white one. Uh, but this was the Borak. And now, if you think back to the Toa, you remember the Toa I was talking about earlier? They got an upgraded form called the Toa Nuva, where they had armor and everything. Well, these guys got that too, in the form of the Borak Cow. I'm pretty sure. Names are hard with these guys. So yeah, Borat Cal. You'll notice something straight away with the Borat Cal. I only have two of them. I never got all of these. I'm not too sure why. These are quite old. So these were definitely in the, the peak of my collecting phase. This is when I only got stuff for like Christmases and birthdays or the very rare time you go shopping and I ask for one. But these guys have a metallic look to them. I only have the green and the black one. Uh, one point is they're an absolute nightmare to get out when they're not folding up into their little balls. Like, oh my god. I see how they get damaged. The Borak Cal, pretty much identical to the Borak, except they've got the metal silvery bits on now. The faceplate at the front is completely silver. Uh, the masks aren't too different, I don't believe. They still do their little chicken attack kind of thing. But if we compare, say, this black one here with its normal... Borat counterpart, uh, the, it's not much different. <laughs> they are very, very similar, aren't they? They get built the exact same way, but I still thought they were really cool. Armored versions upgraded. Uh, I kind of wish I did have them all, but we can't have everything. So that was the Borak. The next one is, I actually don't know their names. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember these. These are the Metra Nui. They are going back to the sort of humanoid shape. Um, these have probably got my f one of my favorite designs for the whole set. Now, I don't actually have that much nostalgia for these guys. God, Christ knows when they came out. But um, they do look really good. There's so much like movement in them. They've got feet movement, they've got knee movement, arms, their other arms. Their weapons look awesome. Uh, like this guy, for example, he's got basically wings. Uh, the masks look good. And this is my favorite thing about them. They kind of have this sort of glowing eyes if you put lighting behind them, which I always thought was really awesome. Uh, the Metro Nui, pretty sweet. I wish I had more fun memories of them. I feel like I didn't get to play with them much. Maybe I was getting into the uh, the teenager, a bit older, not playing with them as much here. I've noticed that the, the red guy here, which his name is Toa Vakama, uh, he's missing his blaster. God knows where that is. Uh, but these guys have articulation as well. But these, these are cool. These are really cool. Each one is uh, pretty awesome, except for this blue one here. She, for some reason, has a weird mask that is kind of see-through and doesn't look very nice. It looks ugly, but the blue looks good. She just needs a different mask. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're pretty awesome. Now, unfortunately, once we've got to these guys, this is where I've stopped collecting entire sets of barnacles. I do have some bits and pieces of some future sets, and before we get onto those, I know what most of you are thinking. Well, you've got all of these, but you don't have the Mask of Light or the Mask of Darkness, Makuta. How can you call yourself a Bionicle Collector? Aha! I do have them, actually. So here they are. That's how 
you move them gently. Yeah, I think I don't have Makuta or the Mask of Light, do you? I've got them still in their boxes. Uh, unfortunately, I've sellotaped them all up. And as you can hear, uh, some assembly might be required with these. Uh, basically, Makuta is the big evil one. He was the star of a villain. Uh, the Mask of Light, a little really annoying Bionicle turned into him eventually. Uh, and the Mask of Light is pretty damn awesome. Like, that is what he looks like now. I'm not going to whip him out because I'll have to sort of tape him back up. He had a bike. Uh, he had a bike anyway. Uh, they could also fuse together, which I thought was really awesome. Do one of them have a picture together? Uh, no, they don't. So, you could do a thing where you kind of merge the two together, which is probably one of the coolest things. I have ever built and is there anywhere that I can prove that's a real thing no but it did exist I think unless I created it myself I don't think I did I think I could combine them together uh, but Makuta was sweet and so was the Mask of Light uh, I'm not about to take them out because that's hassle but there you go that was those the stars of movies so next up we have the Kanoka I do believe they're called unfortunately I wasn't able to collect all of these I have two of the main six and two special edition ones which we'll talk about in a second but the Kanoka to me, they're kind of a mashup between the Toa Nuva with their like metallic armors and things, as well as the Rakshi, because they've kind of got this serpenty reptile look to them. But the Kanoka are pretty cool. I wish I did collect more of them because this guy's weapon with its like dual colors looks really good. Um, I think they're sweet. Really cool like design and everything. They do something weird, which I've never been a big fan of. And they've got these like little discs you put on their like backs here. I don't think it's gonna work because I think I'm missing some stuff. But you put this Beyblade style, I know it does work, rip launcher in. Okay, here we go. Did you see it fly off into the distance? No, well it did. It just slivered down there. And um, they basically have these little discs on their back. Yeah, I guess it's kind of cool, kind of fun. Uh, but I, I think they're kind of awesome. I wish I knew more about them. Uh, their dual colored weapon things do look sweet, but these are the, what were they called again? The Kanoka. And we had two special edition ones here. I don't know why they're special edition. I don't know the lore behind them or anything. Uh, but in my head canon for the series, which remember I put most of my Barnacles storylines around Dragon Ball Z. These guys were basically gods uh, of lightning and lava. One was the god of life and one was the god of death. Which I think is a bit weird because in Dragon Ball Super, we have Whis and Beerus. Beerus is the god of destruction and Whis is an angel of life, kind of. So I'm just saying, I'm predicting some stuff. Simpsons might have predicted a lot of stuff. I predict a lot of stuff with Barnacles. Uh, these guys are awesome. Uh, these guys, again, have uh, a rip launcher for their shields. So you put this in there and you can shoot off things from their shields. But I just thought they looked really cool. Uh, really awesome designs. I like their staff-like weapons and their big shields. This is why I like Kopaku, the, the ice one. Um, they were both absolutely awesome. Uh, so these two were pretty da pretty damn dope. Uh, and now we're getting on to the uh, the ones I have very little of. Okay, these ones are the Metronui. They, I know nothing about them, but they most likely are evil based on their shape. Now, would you look at that? Sifting through the Metronuis, I've only found Tahu Nuba's other side of his weapon. Profit, you can tell how long it's been since I've looked for these. I know nothing about them. I have no nostalgia for these. And my personal opinion, I think they're hideous. Uh, I don't think they look good. Uh, they have a very evil look to them as well, so clearly they're bad guys, but I don't know, I just think they're being a bit lazy with these ones. This one squeaks as well. Uh, they've got the old Toa feet, they've got some Toa parts, and I don't know, they're just a bit meh. Their special ability is they've got these kind of mouths here that you insert a disc into and then you can just fire it. Oh god, wait, oh there you go. Uh, this blue one here, I've snapped one of his swords, one of his swords are a bit damaged, I've just noticed. But uh, I'm sure... It'll still fire. Fire. Oh. So yeah, this is the Metro Nui. Uh, I don't know much about them. Does it talk about it on the back of the law or anything? Yeah. Vaki Bordaka. The names, they're hard to remember. I'm not going to lie. So that was the Metro Nui. I've got no nostalgia for these. If you do, I'm sorry. We're coming to a close now. Next, we have these guys. This is Inika Toa Jala and Inika Toa Nukura. Uh, these guys, I only have two of them, but I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty sweet. First of all, their like, storage thing is pretty awesome. Uh, and they have special weapons. Oh, they also have little balls on the top. As you can see, I've just dropped one. Ah, oh, some assembly required this one. 
we'll get to him. This is a better example. Uh, you've got this kind of weapon inside of here and the uh, the blasters on the top. So you can take that out. It's also got colors on it. I hope these work because these were so awesome. So I only had two of these and these were probably the last ones I ever got because first of all, these light up. I don't know if it's gonna light up now, but oh God, it does. I don't know if you can see that. I doubt you can. Uh, it's lighting up, it's flashing. Oh, this is the other one. Press the button. Oh, they both work, but you can't see them flashing. <laughs> I don't think you can. If, if you could see them flashing, they are. Uh, this one's kind of like a laser cannon. This one's like a flame sword. Uh, the best thing about them is they have so much personality in them now, and they're got different colors that are see-through. Oh God, these are so much awesome. These, these were awesome. Not only that, but they also had these kind of blaster guns. So if we put this on his hand here, uh, what you could do, I've done this one upside down, I think, is you get their little balls and you drop them into their blasters. So you get that. And then how do you do this now? You just push. So I'm trying to aim at the actual camera. I could, I could smash it. Oh, I don't want to press it too hard. Oh, there's actual, actual force in that. Listen to that. <laughs> so yeah, you can shoot them like that. Uh, have loads and loads of fun. They look good. Uh, their faces are like rubber as well. Like you can peel off their face. Oh my God, his face is gone. So they were, for the most part, an actual success. Um, but that face is weird without it. Uh, put that back on, you sir. Uh, this, I've got no, I don't remember anything about them really. I don't really play with these too much as a kid, but oh God, I really hope you can see the flashing lights. You see it flashing in there? Awesome. So my final barnacle, which I am actually missing the top for and appears to be an absolute mess inside of here. This is Radak uh, Piranha. These guys have a wrap. I remember watching a video about uh, barnacles and it's like a piranha something wrap or whatever. It's like an absolute nightmare. Oh my God. This guy's bottom half has like really cool like claw feet. I don't remember this at all. Man, these are awesome. I'm gonna start playing with these again. Uh, he has this kind of like exoskeleton rubber thing here. Uh, he seems to have a gun and a thing. Let's see if we can correctly attach him. Now I'm not 100% sure if I've correctly assembled him, but this is what he looks like. And I think this guy's head glows. Hmm. This guy seems to have a button on his head that I think makes his head glow, but I think it's run out now. But his design's pretty, Nothing too much to it. I don't even know if you're supposed to be standing up straight like this, but he's kind of got this back spike thing. Now, nah, I'm not into this one. I can see why I didn't collect any more after this one. But this one with this is the last one that I collected. And I do believe they stopped making them at some point as well. Um, I know that they, in like the barnacle community, people like diminished in their sort of like how they liked them. These were two dragons that I created as well. Hold on. So, yeah, uh, that was that. I also have this box uh, full uh, of miscellaneous barnacle pieces. So I'm sure there's bits and pieces that probably need to be attached to other stuff, but we'll get to them eventually. Uh, and also I have all these manuals and things here. Uh, the moral of the story is they're pretty awesome. I just felt like showing all these off. I think this was just an excuse for me to play with my barnacles again, but I'm going to give them all dust stuff. I'm going to see how many pieces I can find for each one, put them all back to their pristine condition if I can, and probably put them in a little bit better storage this time. They were getting a bit dusty in the crawl space, but yeah, thank you for joining me on this little nostalgia journey. <laughs> Don't worry, I haven't got too many more collectibles to show in a random video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you sat for all this, thank you very much for watching. If you had barnacles as a kid, what was your favorite? Uh, how many am I missing? How much of my set do you think is complete out of every barnacle that exists? Do they still make them now? Let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, guys, thank you all for watching and catch you later.